Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another 6-5 podcast in the Movandi booth at Mobile World Congress 22 in Barcelona. I'm here with my awesome co-host, Daniel Newman, but more importantly, executives from Movandi, Miriam and Tahir. How are you? No, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Can you believe we're back at an event, and it's like it's almost a complete event, not kind of 25%, 50%, but it's, I would say, a good 85%. No, I have to admit, I did not expect this, and I'm so glad to see, you know, it's it's really good to get with people face-to-face yeah. -face and actually uh, get the ideas, etc. so it's, it's great. Yeah, well, well, we we had met over Zoom yeah. um, over a year ago, and, you know, the first time I'm thinking, gosh, I hope she's not disappointed, you know, but, <laughs> um, you, you know. <laughs> no. So okay. I'm actually very, very happy to oh, see you. Oh, there we go. There we go, Daniel. It's always <laughs> great. It's always great. I mean, when I met Tahir for the first time, it was at a crowded NRF event. Uh, that's right. You know, that's and right. That, that kind of stuff uh, happens. And then you go for a few years, and it actually feels normal to yeah. not be around people. And so it's almost like we're, we're reacclimating ourselves exactly. to the real world of events. And if next year we get to a point where we can do these without the masks, it would be even more awesome. Yes. But uh, hey, let's talk about Mavandi, yes. right? Since we're here in the booth. Um, you know, Miriam, I guess as CEO or you know, leading this company, give us a little bit of the background because you guys are doing some really interesting stuff, but I don't think everyone quite knows that yet. So what's the skinny? So Movandi was founded by some experts and innovators from Broadcom. Uh, we have assembled the world's best millimeter wave and generally RF team in the world. Uh, we have a lot of IPs and ideas, innovations. We have about 90 patents that we have filed and uh, about 88 of them actually have been issued already. Uh, we you know, if you compare us with other companies, uh, you don't find too many companies who have as much core technology as we have put together. We have significant amount of core technology, all the way from the chipsets that are needed for these applications, as well as software and system and algorithms that have enabled us to help with some of the technology, you know, solutions that uh, our partners are making, for example, in the smart repeaters, which are fundamental in addressing challenges in the millimeter wave coverage, etc. So we have optimized our solutions, our technology to provide the best performance, improve the uh, range, address coverage uh, challenges, and also provide the most flexibility in terms of you know different configurations that you can put together in different devices. Yeah, we've been uh, researching 5G, I think since my company was born about a decade ago, and one of the things that absolutely came to the top was just how hard RF was in 5G, right? Uh, in 4G, 3Gs, all the other Gs, it was almost, I wouldn't call it an afterthought. It was very difficult, but when you get to 5G, the complexity and the bands and the, the beam steering, uh, it gets super, super complex. And I know, you know, you have the engineering background and run the company, I know you know this better than anybody, um, but, but let me flip this over to Tahir. Great technology, but what does this mean to the 5G tech, the ecosystem, you know, the, the, the bigger picture in 5G? So, very important. So thanks for acknowledging this. The best team in the industry, bar none, that I have seen. And you know I invested in the company a while back. Very happy about it. Two, uh, in, incredible intellectual property, very unique, extremely uh, differentiating. Yeah. So the problems that Movandi's team has managed to solve, the solutions that we bring to the marketplace make 5G deployments possible. Okay. They make it cost effective, they make it easy, not only for the consumer side of the business, but also for the enterprise side of the business. So we are at the time when 5G is beginning, millimeter wave 5G is finally beginning to take off. And we're happy to be here and we sense it, we feel it, the energy is here. So we have been at the forefront and now we see the pipeline being generated, the demand increasing, the interest uh, is there. So we're very happy and we enable the market. Yeah, it's awesome. 
Yeah, you know, it's uh, funny you mentioned millimeter wave and taking off because, uh, you know, that's been one of those areas where, you know, 5G is not all created equal. Now you hear that in a lot of different instances, not all created equal in terms of how it's utilized, how it's deployed, but also the fact is, is that that super blazing fast 5G experience, that everybody, it really is the, the millimeter wave experience. And we need to, we need to see that at scale. Now, uh, another company that's been really singing that same praise has been Qualcomm. Qualcomm, uh, you know, is emphatic about the fact that millimeter wave is the future of 5G. It's not to say that sub six isn't important in terms of deploying it at scale. But you guys, Miriam, actually announced a partnership this week with Qualcomm. Talk about what the announcement was and what that means. So basically we have the same uh, exact vision, right? Qualcomm and us believe that uh, millimeter wave can bring a lot to the picture. We believe that uh, that's the ultimate promise of 5G and everything has to go there. So we are collaborating on the shared vision that we have together. Now, if you combine their small cell with the uh, FSM 5G RAN that they have developed, right, with our repeaters together, smart repeaters that we have developed, you put that together, you can ensure that you can deliver, you can make sure that you can extend the coverage, uh, all this penetration issue, everything that everyone talks about, uh, and the ex you accelerate the deployment, because remember, these things, uh, I say things because I really look at them as things, <laughs> eventually I see these little smart repeaters going everywhere, right? They can ensure that you don't need fiber, so you do have a small cell, you extend the range, you extend the coverage, and they're so easy to install. And that's the goal and the vision that we both have. We want this market to grow to that level. We want to see this uh, solution to become almost like, you know, at the end of the day, uh, become like Wi-Fi mesh that you see everywhere, and I would believe it could go there. So they have the cell phones that have 5G limiter with it. They're going to expand on that. They have, they're going to have the small cells. We're going to be in between and making sure that this whole ecosystem can be delivered. So. Uh, again, shared vision, joint uh, go to market together, and also the synergy and testing and all this stuff that we can. Uh, so we want this market to grow right. at the end of the day. Right. Well, huge benefits uh, for both companies. And uh, it took me about five seconds to figure out your value prop, okay, for especially for millimeter wave. I mean, you have value in, in mid bands and a lot, uh, a lot of the other stack, but. Uh, with 5G millimeter wave, it really it really hits, and we're not even talking about theory. This is reality. You have deployments, right? There's a lot of companies that we research that are still in theory mode, uh, but but you have multiple installations out there, and uh, maybe Tahir, you can talk about uh, some of the use cases that are out there. Maybe the ones that are already installed or or maybe some of the ones that uh, have more of a future element to it. So you know that. We have been deployed, tested, certified in different networks. It's, been, it's not been easy, let's just say that, but we have done it. We've come a long way. We've done it alone to a large extent so far. Very happy that Qualcomm recognized us, endorsed us, and now promoted us as a partner. It's a big deal for the industry. So it makes everyone uh, win out of this. Our service providers are very, I think, are going to win out of this for the reasons Maria mentioned. Faster deployment, lower cost deployment. The end users, whether it's consumer, us, walking around with these 5G phones, or the enterprise, they're also going to win out of this. Lots of use cases. I have to tell you, one of the surprising elements of this industry for us has been, we've seen a more rapid interest um, from private networks, which you see in this show. Industrial applications, robotic applications, uh, warehousing and logistics have been very big. More recently, we are happy to tell you that we're also seeing autonomous vehicles get into the picture. Many of them recognize that you have to have sub six, but millimeter wave to make these vehicles long lasting and um, basically in the industry for 15 years or beyond. So we are now talking in all of these applications. So this is really good. We, we sense that by the time the market is beginning to take off for, for the industry. Excellent. Now you mentioned though, 
we've spent, well, I guess we've spent a lot of time here talking about millimeter wave, but you guys aren't uh, ignoring sub six. You just mentioned it. And like I said, I believe that there may even be some plans on the reference design side for you guys to offer some smart repeaters in the sub six uh, range. Is that something that you guys are also looking at? Right, so we actually, you know, again, we have established ourselves to be sort of the leader in this millimeter wave. So right. operators, our partners, whether it's through our partners or ourselves, they come to us whenever they see challenges. Uh, and not to mention that, you know, we have just announced, by the way, uh, WNC dual band 2839, the indoor repeater and you know we work together we have delivered that and FRTEC uh, the out more like split outdoor repeater all that but so they have been showing this they have been actually doing trials with operators with and do, during this process because they're global right they do get the feedback that look we're having almost not, not the exact same challenges but they're having challenges with sub six as well because uh, again, you know, frequency changes from almost to twice as it, much as it used to be in LTE and, uh, you know, path loss and penetration, everything becomes. So we do get that from directly the operators working with and from the, uh, from the partner companies saying that, can you help us? Because sub six has some challenges. We want you to take what you have in millimeter wave and take it to sub six and do the same thing with the repeaters. And, you know, sub six is different, right? Many people look at it as almost upgrade of what you had in 4G. And so there are, there have been some solutions that people have been using in 4G and they they have delivered stuff in sub six. However, uh, the mind will support in sub six is this challenge. So even if people have done, put something together, two by two, four by four, forget it, no one has it. Even the two by two that they have delivered is not necessarily supporting the rank and MIMO. So that's something that we come in. So people, when they have issue, they come in and because they know we're innovating, doing all this kind of stuff. And we have been working on it. So uh, that's something that we are basically working on and we would be having solutions later on. And even beyond that, even when it goes to, you know, small cells, etc., we have had uh, companies coming to us and saying, how can you make this lower power? And because, as I mentioned, we're not just a repeater company. It's our technology as a whole that is in enabling repeater, but exact same kind of core technology, our chipsets and antennas, everything is used in CPs, small cells, etc. And so people see it and say, can you make the rest of these things as well, lower power, more integrated? So, so again, we're at a place and we have proven ourselves and we have shown our capability throughout this whole journey that, that you know, we, we get this kind of request and we're basically in the process of looking at them and working. It sounds like on. a tremendous amount of opportunity. It's funny, so I've, I've been learning a lot about Sub6. Uh, it was kind of billed as, oh, this is going to be easy, broadcast everywhere and it's not ending up to be true. Uh, there are a lot of challenges like you talked about. Uh, certainly there's still challenges in millimeter wave. And in fact, um, uh, on your website, now even though I didn't do this research, I, it was a good piece of research that showed it for millimeter wave, 10% uh, of the cost of a G-Node B, you could put one of your repeaters in. And um, I'm expecting, in particular, I think five, millimeter wave for the rest of the world hit in this show. Okay, uh, it's been in the U.S. Uh, micro deployments, but this is where I think it's just going to take off because 5G and the whole, I would say, vision of it was a full stack, basically three different layers uh, of the cake for all of the value uh, uh, to come in. So I know we're talking about sub six here, but but 5G millimeter wave still has a tremendous uh, amount, a tremendous way to go here. I completely agree. Absolutely. And, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, and some of the research that some of your colleagues have, you know, from Nokia, everywhere, there is a whole lot that have been done, and we all know. I mean, look at everyone, even the operators. Everyone agree that sooner or later, and we would say sooner, meaning in a couple of years, sub six cannot provide 
what's needed to basically support the capacity and especially right. in especially in some areas right, right. more dense areas etc so uh, we agree with that uh, and we all know that at the end of the day many locations will have both complements sub six as well as millimeter that's what you're gonna see in the future I've been in this industry for a long time to have seen many things I was talking to uh, you know before this uh, and I was explaining, you know, we have constantly over the past 20 years uh, seen things that people have said it's not possible. You can do starting with putting radios in bulk CMOS, making SOCs with combo connectivity, going into the cell phones. And now we're facing the same thing, right? People are looking at this thing and saying this penetration issue, the cost of it. But I can tell you, I actually, we actually see a lot of companies, not only on the technology side, we actually see a lot of companies on the business side of it are coming up with a lot of innovative ideas to make the TCO, the, right. uh, you know, the cost of the deployment and everything together come down. And, and I can assure you it's going to happen. In the the fundamental technology that the company has worked on can be applied to different bands. And if a carrier service provider has a layer cake approach, which they all do, which is the right way of doing it, and they can make their own selection how they want to go after what spectrum, that's all fine. But I think what's important to note is we have solved a number of different problems, engineering problems, tough ones, that can be applied to different spectrum. We actually went and solved the most difficult one first. Uh, which enables a lot of applications to take place and now we'll apply it. We're able to help anyone and in fact the strategy is to go different spectrum, different components, offer a whole range of solutions so they can pick and choose power, frequency, size and application. So that's really important. Well I definitely uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak with both of you guys here. It's a lot of fun. I love the fact that you, you, know, you said that uh, we've constantly, people have constantly doubted um, what we're, you know, capable and, you know, even going against the grain of what, uh, you know, popular sentiment is. And so this seems like another one of those things where you guys are, you know, taking a chance, going out aggressively, but of course also attaching yourselves to a trend uh, in 5G and in, in terms of connecting the world more, more, more successfully that is only going to grow in demand in the coming years. So thank you both for joining us for this 6.5 in the booth here at Mobile World Congress 2022. It's fun, and by the way, we look forward to coming back and hearing about your newest and the next things um, in 2023. Thank, Thank you. you, good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you.